Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. She's in Oregon, Portland. Well, actually, <laughs> Lake Oswego. <laughs> it's my ex-wife, you know. And normally people don't even talk to their ex-wives, but somehow every two weeks I do. So, you know, that's the kind of guy I am. Hey, uh, and I talk to you. I mean, that's even the bigger. <laughs> well, considering our marriage, you're, I'm lucky you do talk to me. <laughs> so. <laughs> It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, and we're very forgiving people. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Ronnie Bennett. She has a, a blog called timegoesby.net. And uh, if you go there, you'll find out the depressing facts of what it's like to get older and some of the positive facts as well. Tell me something good that, about getting I older. I think that it's not. A, it, it, I don't think it's a negative blog. No, I don't think it is either. But, I mean, when I say it's timegoesby.com, it's about what it's like to get older, everybody's immediately going to think, oh, that's got to be uplifting. Well, you know? the problem was, and I mean, you know, briefly, why I started it, has been 15 years. I didn't realize that till recently. Um, was because I was trying to find out what it was going to be like to get old, and I was doing a lot of reading. And, <laughs> and everything 15, 20 years ago when I started was just awful. Whether it was popular stuff or medical stuff, they only said awful things about getting old to the point where you'd think, well, just shoot yourself. I mean, once you hit 40 or 50, you might as well. And so that's why I started the blog because I didn't think it could possibly be that bad. Yeah. And it's not. Okay, what's the best thing about getting older? I want to know. I'm more relaxed about everything. I don't get as exercised over things that go wrong. Okay, that's you. Okay, go ahead. I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people say that. Well, you know me. You know me because, you know, you <coughs> were married to me. Uh, so you know me. And uh, the thing that you don't, uh, you must remember is that I stress over everything. And so uh, that stressing over everything uh, has caused a situation in which, uh, as I get older, all the things that you worry when you were younger amplify themselves. You become more of a caricature of yourself as you get older. You really think so? Oh, absolutely. You don't drop any of that stuff? No, I, I, I was talking to a Harry Shearer once mm -hmm. about, and I said, what's the hardest impression to do? And he said, somebody when they're young. He said, I can do the old Bob Hope, I can't do the young Bob Hope. He said, I, I can do the, uh, you know, the, the old uh, so-and-so, but I can't do the, I can do the old John Wayne, but I can't do the young John Wayne. Sorry to interrupt, but did you see Matt Damon as Brett yes. Kavanaugh? Yes, yes. He, he was terrific. <laughs> the only thing he didn't get right, he had the nose thing, you know. Yeah, that, that and thing. the mouth that yeah, always turns no, down. But they didn't get this part. Oh, I don't. I don't remember that. Oh, part. Did, his tongue was. Lot? His tongue was just like almost ripping his mouth apart. Oh yeah. Yeah. He did a great job. I really. He did I a terrific job. Laughed. That was, was a great. very, very funny bit, you know. But then again, we don't like Brett Kavanaugh, so we found it funny. I wonder how people who like Brett Kavanaugh found it. You know, we haven't heard from them. Yeah, we haven't heard from them. Uh, you know, I mean. Quite frankly, I think from everything that I've been able to ascertain, and I'm just sitting here watching television, this guy's pretty much a sleaze bag. You know? Privileged. He, male privilege. Male privilege and the kind of guy I would have hated in high school. You know, I would have hated anywhere if I had met him in life. Um, you think you do. Man, women are going. <laughs> women have pretty much had enough. <laughs> Yeah. You're a little out of sync today, folks. I don't know why she's out of sync, but all of a sudden she's gone out of sync. Well, I'm more looking at your picture. You're not out of sync. Well, yeah. 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 I don't know what to tell you about that. I don't know how you how you stop this out of syncness, but uh, it, it sometimes it just cures itself. Anyway, listen to the audio, folks. <laughs> anyway. So where was I? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, this was the kind of guy I, you know, anywhere in life I would have found him objectionable. I mean, he just, and when he got mad the other day, that should have said to everybody, I don't want this on the Supreme Court. This guy's a loose cannon. 
But no, here you got uh, Grassley. Now, you and I have a big argument. I think Grassley it should have retired years ago. <laughs> you know, but he just sits up there doddering his way. I know you hate what I'm I saying. I don't think he is doddering. And I think it's okay to be old and do what he's doing. I don't happen to agree with him most of the time, but that's a separate issue. That's not about being old. Well, I happen to think uh, uh, Feinstein is getting a little long in the tooth, you know. Well, that's okay. She's still doing fine. Well, you know, I just think that, uh, 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 well, you and I are going to (laughs) argue about this forever. I just think that as, you, uh, you know, I would prefer some younger politicians, not really young. I mean, Obama young, a little older than that, because I think they have more contemporary values. And let's face it, when these guys are making laws, they're not making them to affect you and I. How long are you and I going to be around? They're doing it to affect people who are in their 30s and 40s. And uh, Well, I, hopefully the, they're taking into consideration the attributes of all Americans. Yeah, you're in sync again, by the way. Uh, <laughs> the attributes of all Americans? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes there are laws that affect children. Sometimes there are laws that affect old people. The Republicans want to essentially do away with Medicare and Social Security. That's not so good for old people. And so on. I mean, there it, it's many ages have to be dealt with in um, governing the country in, in all the many ways governing goes on. Yeah, but I somehow feel that, uh, uh, you know, that, that there's, a, there's something to be said for somebody being more contemporary and, and having a uh, out-of-the-box view of things. I think as well, we get older... Well, out-of-the-box. Well, no, That's about 20 uh, years old. Tell me, tell me you don't... Thinking, tell me not you, as wonderful as people think. Tell me you don't, as an older person think less out of the box than you used to. I don't know what out of the box means. Out of the box means that there are certain ways of doing things and somehow you're out of the box and you can see a new way of doing it. You, you can know. do that at any age. Uh, I, some people become old farts at, at 25. But I'm, I, you know, what I'm talking some about... Some people invent wonderful new things at 70. Okay. Uh, it, as I've gotten older... I mean, I've always liked to think of myself as an innovator. I could always come up with a new idea. I always said, people can steal my ideas as fast as they can steal them, I can create them. Okay? Uh, and now that I'm older, it's just a little bit harder to think outside that box. You know, I mean, it here I, I'll give it, you an example. That doesn't mean you don't. I'll give you an example. I'm doing the Internet. Okay? Uh, I'm not doing the Internet. I'm doing a radio program on the internet or mm-hmm. what I've been doing as a radio program. But the internet needs a different set of values, needs a different way of doing things. And so those kids who somehow know how to do it are getting all the hits, right? You know, some girl, some young girl in her, I think 14 or 15, who was giving out makeup tips at 100 million views. Go figure that young one. Fourteen year old girls want to know about makeup. There are a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> they like to see their own age people. All that I, doesn't make what you do bad. Uh, it makes it makes it harder for me to figure out what I should be doing in the world of the internet to 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 make the best use out of the internet and to be able to uh, come up with new ideas for the internet that are internet specific. Okay, all I'm doing is a radio program on the Internet, and that's not using the Internet. Which is about what 99.9% of people who put videos up online are doing. It's, we talk to each other with pictures. I guess. I guess. I, have, I know a guy. There's one guy. Uh, I have to admit, I still play video games. It's just one of, my, it's one of my things. Uh, I have a friend who every Wednesday night gets together with friends. Yeah. And they, they play... World of Warcraft. Oh well, that, that that's that that's old school. I mean, I play Tomb Raider. I like to kill people and climb trees. Uh, oh, yes, you're and, so cool. Then and, and um, there, so I don't understand completely how to get through some of these games. So I go online and there's this guy named the Rad Brad, who takes a game like Tomb Raider, the latest ta- Tomb Raider, and goes through the whole game and plays it online. Half a million views. 
I, you, you know? know, I've never played an online video game. I don't even know how to react to that. And I have to admit something. I actually enjoy watching him play it. But I, you know, I, I'm sorry. I just don't know what that means. It's, it's just I'm ignorant of it completely. Yeah. See, that's because you're old. That's because you're that's old. Like watching somebody play Monopoly. That, that, I mean, <laughs> that's because that's because you're old. <laughs> It's okay to be old. I don't mind. I don't have to know everything young people do. You know what? I, uh, I've i said this before. I think the worst thing about getting old, and you people should be listening who are younger because we're warning you, it's coming, <laughs> uh, is that um, you become invisible. You become invisible well, to other people. Women have a much worse trouble with that, much worse problem with that than men. Old women it or women for, in general? No, no, no. It starts for women at about 35 that people don't see you anymore. Yeah. 35, 40. But it's like, you know, I mean, uh, nobody pays. Obviously, they don't see me. I don't even get the benefit, which I thought was one going to be one of the benefits of being 78 going on 79 years. That when I got on a subway train and it was full, somebody would get up and give me their seat. Never. Once. Once in the oh, last. Oh, the last time I was in New York, the first subway ride I took, somebody did that. <laughs> Really? Maybe I look older than you do. Uh, maybe, maybe. All I know is they, they, uh, and what I hate most of all, okay, are these mothers with their fucking kids. And, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a line that goes, if you ride for free, you must sit on a knee. Meaning, oh, meaning it, little kids, have little to kids if you get them for free, should sit on a knee. No, they got them sitting, taking up a seat I could take. Oh, do you feel like you've got to sit down and not stand, huh? And then if I were to complain about it, they go, ah, he's just an old fart. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you're asking me what's bad about being old. That's some of the things that's bad well, about being you know old. The opposite is true for teenagers. Nobody takes them seriously. And I really remember way back when I was a teenager how I thought I was pretty smart. I thought that I had useful opinions. And nobody, no grown-ups would pay any attention to me. And I looked much younger than I was. Finally, by the time I hit 30, I looked like a grown-up. Yeah. And people started to take me seriously. But I was really pissed off all the years leading up to that, that no one would pay attention to me. So it happens all through your life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, um, uh, it, it just, I don't know, I just want some of those benefits. I got a benefit. This weekend, I got okay. a benefit. Went up to Vermont, took a plane, which I, uh, air travel, you know, for a short trip like that, I just don't even want to go, okay? Because, <laughs> I understand. I do because understand. getting out to the airport and... Uh, uh, it takes longer to get to the, the airport than to get there. Yeah, that, oh, the, the flight's only 45 minutes. Okay, and, so it takes, and when did you have to leave home to be there to get I on? I had the to, it was a it was a, what a one o'clock flight flight. We left at eleven. Yes. <laughs> right, and then we have to go through uh, uh, a TSA, uh, which is like you take off every article of clothing, <laughs> and then try and figure out where you put it all. Like I don't remember where I put my keys. I don't remember. Where, couldn't find my wallet, you know, everything. It just all gets into disarray because it all goes into these buckets, okay? But the one thing I found out coming back, I didn't know, know going, but coming back, if you're over 75, you don't have to take your shoes off. <laughs> I wonder what that, oh, maybe they think old people so, can't bend over. Yeah, so that's the benefit, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> of being older. When you get to 75, you don't have to take your shoes off at TSA anymore. So they think if you're that old, too, that you won't have a shoe bomb. Yeah. Like, there was only one shoe bomb in the history of the world. <laughs> and it didn't even go off. It burned the guy's feet. Okay? Right. And f ever since then, how many hours have been taken up with people taking their shoes off, you know, and running them through the scanner? I mean, come on. Come on. Anyway, I think, but that's... I think the worst part... It's having to leave home many hours longer to get to the airport than it takes to get there on the airplane. Yeah, well, I just I think it was just uh, uh, a wonderful thing that 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 was the one benefit. That's it. That's it. You know that and senior tickets at movie theaters, which it cost too much anyway, even if you're getting a senior. You know, a senior ticket if you're going to a 3D movie 
at the Comfy Chair Theater where we go. At the what? Comfy Chair Theater. <clears throat> So they have these lounge chairs, you know, the kind of chairs you say you'll never put in your living room, but you go to a movie theater to sit in. And um, um, uh, though it costs us uh, $21 a ticket per person. See, I don't go to movies and theaters anymore. $21, so. yeah, yeah, and that's for a senior ticket. Oh, what a, be, what a midlife people Oh, by think. the way, the cab... Back and forth costs us about twenty five. <laughs> so by the time we're through, it better be a goddamn good fucking movie. What did you see? Well, no, it's not any particular film I'm talking about now. Oh, okay. But I've gone to some that were pretty horrid, and I went, you know, I we just blew like close to eighty dollars. Oh, with the popcorn, we forgot the popcorn. Oh, which? How much is popcorn these days? Uh, popcorn's up to about seven, eight dollars for a bucket. <laughs> Which we have to. They let you bring your own. <laughs> oh, you know, you can't bring your own. If you brought your own, they would tell you, I'm sorry, you have to leave that outside the theater. And I'm going. How, how would they know? I wish I were a lawyer because there's a suit there. <laughs> oh, stop it. There's a it's suit not worth there. The effort. <laughs> it's not worth the effort, believe me. You know, I want a good lawyer like Brett Kavanaugh. That's who I got to get. You know. <laughs> what do you think about it? Him. I said he was a cre he's a creep. He's just a creep. I just, you know, everything, I mean, I believed her. It's you hard know. not to. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, she could have been mistaken about who it was, but I doubt it. You know, but the event did happen to her. I have no question about that. And uh, she was 100% sure it was Brett Kavanaugh. So I, you know, I believe her over him. I mean, I, he wasn't credible. How was he credible? He wouldn't, you know, every time they asked him the question about, you know, would you go for an FBI investigation? His answer was, I'll do whatever the committee wants to do. Well, the committee's nothing but fucking Republicans, okay? What they want to do is... I thought he was embarrassing. That. Yes. You know, when he turned, he was there to answer questions from the senators. And when he turned around Dianne Feinstein's question. I was embarrassed for him. It was so awful. You just out of out of pure politeness in the situation in a in a Senate hearing room with a bunch of senators there with the announced purpose. Everybody knew why he everybody the, was he there. He did the same thing. And he, that, yeah. instead of answering the question, he says, "What about you?" He did, and this, he kept insisting on it. He did the same thing to an, another female senator, where mm -hmm. he said, "She said, asked him, have you ever blacked out?'" And he said, have you? Question, have yeah. you? I think I mean, that was her question. Yeah. No, that wasn't Feinstein's question. It was another one. The other, I'm trying to remember her name now. Doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, she asked him if he ever blacked out. And his answer was, well, have you? Well, wait a minute. This isn't about her. It's about you. And, and you know, and she That's finally. That's what was so embarrassing is that he didn't behave in a normal way. And he was so belligerent i almost thought he was drunk <laughs> well i just don't know you know and then i hear these senators praise heaping praise on him uh, these republicans uh, like lindsey graham was embarrassing well see i think lindsey did that on purpose nobody said that that well, i know of. he's all, and he, i think that was just i don't think he was really that angry i think that he decided to do that to make as big an impression as dr well, they say he was auditioning. What, whatever her name was. Um, and I also think that... Um, they say he was auditioning. Kavanaugh yeah. talked to Trump before he testified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Trump told him how to behave. I think that's what... He it was too him, much like Trump is. Yeah, it was Trumpized. Yes. and And he also... When he first came in, or at some point, somewhere, he answered a question that, no, he had not watched um, the woman's testimony in the morning, and then later he said he did, or vice versa. But he's, he gave both answers, yes, I did, and no, I didn't, which is pretty indicative of a whole lot of questions he answered without, let's just say, full truthfulness. Right. Right. And that's, to me, that is frightening in a potential Supreme Court judge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing that bothered me most about him. 
uh, was, you know, this guy's going to sit on the bench, and I don't think he has the temperament to sit on the bench. I mean, if that was a job interview, he, pa he didn't pass it. He wouldn't pass it in any company in America with that attitude, you know. Of suddenly somebody uh, said something about you that you didn't like, and you responded in that manner. I, see, I thought that was a Trump trait. That's why I think he talked to Trump because Trump always responds that way if somebody says something negative about him. Yeah, and most people don't, and or most at least most people in the public eye don't. Right, and. Um, that he did in, in, in almost exactly the same manner as Trump does when the, in a similar situation made me think he's been, Trump has been coaching him you know, before he went into the Senate hearing room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it just, it, 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 this is all, all it, it gift that keeps on giving. What I was going to say about Lindsey Graham was I think he was auditioning for attorney general. Is what I think That's he was doing. That's what people are saying, yes. Yeah. You know, I heard or read somewhere that 20% of the population of the country watched that hearing last Thursday. Mm -hmm. 20%. And that's huge. I mean, you have to take away all children. You don't count them because they were in school. Yeah. And probably weren't watching it. Maybe in high school they allowed it. Right. But in general, children don't watch that kind of thing. So out of all the grown-ups, which is, would make it an even bigger percentage of the full population, watch that. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I think, given that it's a work day in the middle of the day, yeah. that that many people watched, um, I was surprised there was that much interest. Right, right. There was, but there was. It was it, yeah. it, I, I would imagine that almost every television set you could come across um, uh, had that on it, you know? Uh, because I mean, it was it was compelling television. I mean, I, I, in a way, I walked away this weekend. I was thinking about. It, I said, "This is maybe the biggest event of this sort I've ever seen in my life." Even over Anita Hill. Even over Anita Hill, this was far more dramatic. I mean, she got up, made her statements, was dismissed, and that was it. But this had a uh, a bite to it that. And also, yeah, I've never seen so many heroes in one place at the same time in a Senate hearing. First of all, you had Dr. Ford, who I think is an absolute hero. And then you had Flake, who for some reason knew how to do the right thing. He knew how to play both sides of the fence and do oh, the right thing. Not until two young women yelled at him in an elevator. I don't know that that's what did it. I think he said it's not, but I don't. I, I mean, it was almost immediately afterwards that he came out I mean, and, and reversed himself about all this. So, I, I, and he also is still saying that he still might vote for Kavanaugh. Really? Well, well, he might vote for Kavanaugh if the if the FBI uh, thing comes out to exonerate him or to at least uh, not What's substantiate. Right? This is not a legal proceeding. I know, but it, 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 what 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 happens is that the. It's going to be up to the Congress. Each of the members of Congress are going to get a copy of the report. And then mm -hmm. they're going to have to determine for themselves, does this report but exonerate? But they'll do it like they always do. They'll get the report and vote five minutes later. Well, so they'll do like they always do. They'll get the report and have one as an assistant read it. You know? No, they don't even do that. They vote in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. There was something, I've long forgotten the subject, but it was one of those reports, you know, that's got a thousand pages in it, and it got handed out late in the day, and they voted first thing the next morning. Like, they all sat up all night and read it. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. well, the Republicans are yelling and screaming about, we want to vote this week. We want to get this vote done. We've got to get this done. It's, it's important that we speed this thing up. They didn't say that where Merrick Garland was concerned. No. You know, and these same people are yelling this now. We're yelling, oh, it's not right for us to go and listen to Merrick Garland because it's in a president in his last year. And you know the Biden rule? Well, it was a, something Joe Biden said. It wasn't a rule that somebody adhered to. You know? Ridiculous. That's true. Just ridiculous. Listen to us. The whole country is like this talking about this. Oh, yeah. You can't I stop talking about didn't, it. Ex when, except for Anita Hill, I can't think of any time that a Supreme Court nomination caused this much <laughs> conversation <laughs> and turmoil. Oh, yeah, no, this is, uh, and even Anita Hill, I don't think in general 
made as much for talking points as this did. You know, uh, I mean, this was dramatic. This, you know, with, with uh, especially once uh, once uh, frat boy came in and started talking, uh, it was it was very entertaining to see this guy going into a flop sweat. Uh, he he's you know anybody who would believe that testimony is crazy, just crazy. Well, we've, well, we've got a lot of those people apparently. Well, we've run out of time, even though we could talk about this for the next three hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I said anything that everybody else hasn't said. Well, uh, we're saying things that probably people who agree with us agree with, and those people who don't agree with us are saying we're both full of shit. So, you know. well, I got an email the other day. From someone I never heard of, a reader, yeah, um, who said she liked my blog, but I should keep my political opinions to myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my blog, I say what I want. My blog, what I want to say, I say. You know, and if you don't like it, I my attitude is: I have a guy on my show who's a big right wing Republican, insanely Republican. Okay. Uh, defends everything Trump does. Uh, and they write me and they say he's on almost every night. And I like it because he's balanced. He's All a right? call in, you mean? He's a call in. See, it, 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 his name is Phil. And, and he, he provides balance. So people write me and they go, I'm never going to watch you until you get rid of Phil. And I go, <laughs> Well, nice to know you because I'm not going to keep somebody off the show because the audience doesn't like him. Have you noticed, I don't get very many right-wing people commenting on my blog because over the years they are so nasty and they attack other commenters or me in a very nasty way. And you don't get to do that more than once on my blog. You do it once and you are banned forever. Right. Uh, so we don't have a lot of that on my blog um, because that will ruin any forum. Yeah. If you have people doing that all the time, it will just go to hell and nobody can right. have a conversation. So I banned them instantly with no warning, no nothing. You're just gone. But um, uh, why do you think Republicans in general, and it's really high percentage, are so belligerent about everything they say, compa particularly compared to Democrats? I have no idea. And with that... <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was, time to go. With that, we'll say goodbye. A fond adieu, uh, a bit of fond adieu. I bid twenty dollars to uh, uh, Ronnie Bennett, who is no. Uh, it, it's it's no uh, coincidence that we both have the same last name. Only it's her real last name because she adopted it legally, and I never have. Uh, thank you, Ronnie. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. We'll talk soon, ladies and gentlemen. Ronnie Bennett. As time goes by. Dot net.